اعوذ باللہ شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام رسول کریم وعلى اله واصحابه ومن سننا بسم الله الرحمن اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا واجتنبه وارنا الباطل باطلا واجتنبه اللهم انا نسالك خير ما سالك عبدك ورسولك نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انا نعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ بك عبدك ورسولك نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Sorry for the uh, sound issues there. Let's continue, inshallah. So our topic today is uh, purification of the soul. And I would like to thank the uh, Darul Islah uh, management for giving us the opportunity to uh, speak to the community every Sunday. And inshallah, every Sunday, 1.30 to 2.30, we will be having our uh, session on the topic of purification of the soul. As you know, brothers and sisters, that this is a month of Ramadan, month of Barakah, and a month of uh, purifying our soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month wants us to um, purify our soul and um, uh, cleanse us ourselves from all the uh, negativities because the month of Ramadan is a month of Rahmah and a month of Tazkirah and a month of uh, reviving the soul, the Iman. So the most important thing to understand when it comes to the topic of purification of the soul is that um, Allah SWT has said in the Quran in Surah, um, uh, surah Shams that uh, indeed successful is the one who purifies their soul and uh, indeed um, uh, loser or Failure is the one who uh, suppresses their soul. Qadaf laham and zakkaha means that uh, indeed successful is the one who purifies their soul. Because Allah SWT says in the previous ayah, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah SWT has embedded into the person uh, the fujur and the taqwa both. So therefore, um, the 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 element of evilness, the element of negativity, is already in our soul as a test from Allah SWT. So Allah SWT says, "Falhamaha fujurha wa taqwaha." That indeed successful, uh, indeed in the person is both fujur from, which means sinfulness or evilness, or it means any any kind of negativity that a person has, and uh, therefore. There is also the good part, you know, fujurha wa taqwaha. There is taqwa also. So Allah SWT says then in the next ayah, قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّهَ Indeed, successful is the one who purifies their soul. And uh, failure is the one who uh, does not purify the soul. قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّهَ زَكَّهَ يَزْكِي To zakki means from the meaning of purification. That's like zakat. The word zakat means purifying of our mal. You know, purifying um, our wealth. That is why we take out certain amount of wealth as zakat, so that we purify our whole man. The concept is that uh, over the time, uh, the malnutrition and malfunctioning of the person may put layers of filth and dirt and dust on the person, and so therefore that person may be able to uh, have a chance to cleanse all that um, impurities. Just like our mal has impurities and we give zakat uh, to purify our souls, similarly we have uh, in our soul, in our ruh, impurities that need to be uh, cleansed, that need to be purified. And that is why it's important to understand that um, a person needs to purify their soul. And what good a month is than Ramadan? Ramadan is the best month to purify the soul because in this month we are fasting, we are not eating or drinking, uh, we are doing more ibadah, we have a, a renewed form of energy of iman and taqwa in this month. So that's why purifying ourselves, one of the purpose of siyam is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah. 
that the whole purpose of fasting is that you may acquire taqwa. And what is taqwa? It is purification of the soul. Taqwa means that you are able to understand your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your rabt, your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in order to have taqwa, when we fast, we are able to control our nafs because food and drink, as we understand, is a spiritual temptation when we when our bellies are full when we have full uh, bellies then the nafs begins to think of shahawat and lazad that's why three things are forbidden in fasting you know no eating no drinking and no shahawat no going to your spouses the reason allah SWT forbade these three things during the day of the fasting throughout the day until evening is that when you cut off food cut off drink and cut off uh, going to your spouses your soul then has time to focus and concentrate on Allah SWT, on Akhirah. Your soul has time to concentrate on the aspect of um, uh, focusing on your ta'alluq with Allah, your connection with Allah SWT. So purification of soul is so um, mandatory, so essential, because it is a part and parcel of our existence. That is why Allah SWT throughout the Quran has informed us that purification of the soul is essential for the survival of the person, especially in the Surah Shams, where Allah SWT says, Qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dasaha. Indeed, successful is the one who purifies their soul, and indeed, loser is the person, the failure is the person who does not purify their soul. And that is why uh, it is very important. Is my voice clear or is it choppy? Just let me know. Type it in. If it's okay, just type okay. So it's very important to understand that um, the person who buries the goodness in their soul will not be able to be successful. And the person who refines their soul, who does tazkiyat to nafs, and who purifies their soul, they will become closer and closer to Allah. So tazkiyat to nafs is something that should be done all around the year. You know, does get to nafs is something that should be done 12 months or 365 days a year. But especially, especially in the month of Ramadan, because in this month, we're doing extra ibadat. We're reading Quran, Tilawat al-Quran. We're doing Taraweeh, you know, extra nawafil prayer. Uh, we are fasting itself. You know, just the fasting itself purifies the soul because when you have no food and drink throughout the uh, 12, 14 hours a day, your soul focuses on uh, on Allah SWT and our ta'alluq, our connection with Allah SWT. That is very important. Now, as far as soul is concerned, Allah mentions in the Quran three levels or three stages of soul. So level number one, the first level of the soul is what we say, which is mentioned in Surah Yusuf, uh, when uh, Zulaikha mentions about that. She says, I don't absolve or relieve my soul, and rarely the soul is laden. Meaning, the soul is inclined for evil. In other words, the ayah is saying to us that human beings, human beings by natural instinct, by natural way, humans are inclined to do evil. You know how easy it is to do a sin. You know how easy it is to do an ithm, a guna. You know, it's so easy. You know, with a, with a snap, with a flick of a second, you can do a sin so fast. But so how difficult it is to do an ibadah, to do a worship. Like how difficult it is in the morning to wake up for tahajjud. How difficult it is in the morning, especially in winters, to wake up for fajr and pray fajr in jama'ah in the masjid. So ibadat by nature, ibadat uh, are cumbersome on the soul because the soul by nature loves ease. And whatever is easy, whatever is ease, the soul will go towards that. The soul will be inclined towards that automatically. So that is what, uh, in Surah Yusuf, that is what Allah SWT is telling us in the Qissa of Zulaikha, the lady who tried to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam. She says, وَمَا أُبَرِّعُ نَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٍ I do not relieve or absolve myself from any guilt. Yes, I am guilt. And then she says, why am I guilty? إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٍ Verily, the soul is laden, is affixed or fixed with evil, meaning the human soul is prone and inclined to do evil easily. The human soul is easily slipping into a sin. So you have to hold your nafs. Like we say in Arabic language, habsun nafs. 
What does taqwa mean? Taqwa literally means restraint. You restrain yourself. The the soul wants to go towards the isim and, and the and the isim, the sin, and you hold your nafs. So the first level, the first daraja, which is the lowest daraja of the soul, is nafsul ammaratun bisu, mentioned in Surah Yusuf, Surah 12 in the Quran. That is the beginning of the 13th Jews, 13th part of the first ayah that over there. وَمَا أُبَرِّعُ نَفْسِ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٍ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي Look at the ayah Allah says, except whoever Allah has mercy on. Meaning human beings, all human beings by nature, by default, are prone and inclined to do evil and sin. Except those people on whom Allah's rahmah and mercy is. So this is where we start. Every soul is on a bare bottom, bare minimum. This is where we start as nafsul ammaratun bisu. Now, when we do ibadat, when we do zikr as kar, we move from here to the second level. What is the second level? Surah Qiyamah. La uqsumu bi yawm al-qiyamah wa la uqsumu bi nafs al-lawwamah. Nafs al-lawwamah is Allah SWT. The nafs, the soul has three levels, three stages. Level one, Prone and inclined to do evil. Level two is nafsul lawama, the self blaming soul, the self reproaching soul, the self accusing soul. These, this is the person who has who has done some tazkia to naf, some purification soul, and and because of that they have increased and moved to the second level, second daraja. And the second daraja, second level is that they are now blaming themselves. They're saying, yes, I am weak. Yes, I have guilt. Yes, I have a lot of sins. Oh, Allah, help me. You know, these kind of things when a person says that, yes, I have done wrong. I have done something mistake. And these kind of things, when a person says they're acknowledging their weakness, they're acknowledging their deficiency, that yes, as an insan, as a human being, I am inclined, I am prone to doing, you know, sinful things, but I need to rectify myself. So at least there is recognition. Nafsul lawama. Lawama, the word lawama comes from loam. Lam wa mean, which means blame. So when a person begins to blame themselves, when a person says, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I need tawbah, I need istighfar, I need to return to Allah. <coughs> so that is a very important thing to understand. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, you are at least acknowledging you are at least acknowledging yourself that you have done something wrong. So it's it's a it's a good step in the right path, in the right direction. You know, you are starting because remember the previous stage or the previous phase is nafsul ammaratun bisu, the nafs that is laden with souls uh, with with sinfulness. So that is the common man. Every common person says, "Yeah, man, pray for me. I am a sinner. Yeah, I have done so many mistakes. Yeah, I'm like this." Like when you go to give somebody nasiha advice, when you go tell someone that, "Yes, I have done something wrong." So therefore, uh, you know. And when you go and tell them that you're doing something wrong, please, brother, sister, don't do that. You know, they say, yeah, I'm a very evil person. I'm a wicked person. You know, don't worry about me. You know, keep your nasiya to yourself. Keep your advice to yourself. This is the nafs al bisu. This is a nafs that is already fully submerged in sin and, and has no tazkiyah, has no purification. A soul that is very corrupt. A soul that is malnourished from Iman, a soul that has malfunctioning, will always reject any kind of good advice from anyone. You know, they'll say, take it or leave it. This is who I am. This is how I am. You know, just accept it or leave it. So that person is on a very low level stage of what we call Tazka to Nafs. This is the bare minimum where you start. Now, when this when this person starts taking Nasiha advice and they do some A'mal, purification of soul, they come to the second level, which is Nafsul Amma, uh, Nafsul Lawama in Surah Qiyamah, Surah 75, second ayah, Allah SWT says, وَلَا أُخْسُوا بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَ and I swear by the self-blaming soul. Allah is saying, He is swearing. Le, uh, uh, Allah SWT is saying that He swears by the self-blaming soul. Now, when this person recognizes the blame and guilt and starts working towards it, like the ayah I recited earlier, uh, for those of you who joined uh, late, I, I apologize for the sound problem and the issue. Alhamdulillah, I fixed it. But you can, you know, at the end of this video, you can really play back and start from the beginning. You'll get that. So as we said in the beginning, قَدْ أَفْلَهَ مَنْ زَكَّهَ وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَ Indeed, successful is the one who purifies their soul. And indeed, loser or failure is the person who does not purify their soul. 
So Allah is giving two types of people, type A, type B. Type A people are always working for purification of soul. And that's the reason I chose this topic uh, when Darul Islam Management asked me. We are very thankful, very thankful to Darul Islam for allowing me the chance to meet you every Sunday from 1.30 to 2.30 on Sundays. And the reason I chose this topic, I told them that purification of soul is a very important topic. And in these four Sundays, we need to discuss how to purify our soul. So today is the first of the series where we we're starting the basic foundation of the topic that every soul has deficiency, every soul has weaknesses, and we need to improve ourselves. So Nafsul Lawama is a person where they are acknowledging their blame, their guilt, their sins, their mistakes, and then they start working on it. And then when they start working on it through tazkiyah, through actions and purification, they move to the next level. The third level or the highest level, the top level, is what we call nafsul mutma'inna. So remember these three terminologies, nafsul ammaradun bisu, nafsul lawama, and nafsul mutma'inna. Our goal in life, our purpose in life is before death. Before our last breath, before we say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and then die, before that, we should reach the level of nafsul mutma'inna, like Allah says in Surah Fajr, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya, fadhuli fi ibadi wa adhuli jannati. O oh, you, the tranquil and peaceful soul, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. What is nafsul mutma'inna? Why the nafs has itminan? Mutma'inna comes from itminan. Itminan from tam'anina, peace, tranquility. And uh, why you have peace and tranquility in your soul? The next ayah says, Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatam mardiyya. The, the, the reason of the peaceful soul, the reason of tranquility in the soul is because of rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Return to your Lord, please with the Allah, and Allah also please. Your Lord please with you, the soul. This is very important to understand. This is a very important concept that we are struggling daily, daily. We are struggling, you know, from the day from the day we eat, we reach the age of puberty. From the day we become mukallaf, mukallaf taklif means that you are now responsible for all the ibadat, for all the do's and don'ts. When you are a child, you're not a mukallaf. You are innocent. That's why children, if they die before they reach the age of puberty, they will go automatically. To jannah because they are not mukallaf. So from the day we reach puberty, we've been accumulating sins and mistakes and whatnot. And the purpose of from that day until we die is that we reach the rida of Allah. Huh? Return to your Lord, um, uh, please with the Lord, and the Lord is also pleased with you. This is a very important concept to understand that we are here in this world not to accumulate wealth, not to accumulate all the luxuries, but we are here in this dunya to accumulate or to achieve the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Once we achieve pleasure of Allah, before we die, we become nafsul mutma'inna. We become the soul that is tranquil. And that is why it's very important to understand that the tranquil soul, uh, you know, how does it... Uh, how do you reach the tranquility of the soul? That is the highest level, the top level. So like, the, just to refresh in our memory, what we studied so far is that there are three types of soul. Lower level, the lowest level is the soul that is laden with uh, and afflicted with sins and mistakes. You know, Ammaratun Bisu, as mentioned in Surah Yusuf, Surah 12. At the beginning of the 13 juz, and then at the, after that is the nafsul lawama mentioned in Surah Qiyamah, Surah 75, second ayah, the blaming soul, the guilty soul, the one that is remembering that yes, I have mistakes, I need to work on myself, work hard. And then the third level is Surah Fajr in Surah uh, Fajr, Allah SWT says, Ya ayyatu nafsul mutma'inna, O oh, you the tranquil soul, reach or uh, return to your Lord in a pleasure, please stay. Please with Allah and Allah please with you. So having established this, that these are the three stages and where we are in each of these stages, each one needs to look to themselves. That, am I Ammaratun Bisu? Am I Lawama? Am I Mutma'inna? You know, have I reached Mutma'inna? Have I, have I reached at least Lawama? Or am I still at the rock bottom basic level of Nafsul Ammaratun Bisu? Now, how do you move from Nafsul Ammaratun Bisu to Nafsul Lawama? How do you 
how do you uh, refine your soul to at least acknowledge guilt, to at least acknowledge mistake that I have deficiency, I have, uh, you know, I have mistakes, uh, I have weaknesses. For that, as the ayah says, Allah says in the Quran, uh, This is in Allah Sumar tells us in the Quran uh, that uh, Surah Nisa, verse 128, Allah says that the uh, the nafs has a shuh, shuh means greed, covetousness. وَإِن تُحْسِنُوا وَتَتَّغُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمُنُ وَخَبِيرًا And if you do ihsan and you do taqwa, then Allah is well aware of what you're doing. So the first thing we need to remove from our hearts, remove from our soul is greed. A shuh, you know, sheen and ha. Uh, so greed and covetousness means what? Becoming greedy for everything in this life. Remember, uh, there are many things, there are temptations of life, you know, for those of you who are following Taraweeh, you know, uh, last night we did Taraweeh here, uh, me and my sons, by the way, our masjid is closed, but I'm just here broadcasting from here, me and my sons, we do Taraweeh every night, you can watch on our channel, and I also do Tafsir of the Quran every day from 4 to 6 p.m., so those of you, if you want to join me, you can come to my masjid YouTube channel, just type Islamic Society of North Jersey, you know, Islamic Society of North Jersey, type that in YouTube, our channel will come up you'll see my videos my picture every day from four to six i'm explaining the one juz of the whole quran word by word ayah by ayah so like yesterday we were talking about surah al-imran in surah al-imran in uh, verse number 30 allah SWT tells us Zuyilin in that ayah allah SWT mentions six things Six things Allah mentions which he has made beautified in this world as a source of attraction, as a temptation. Uh, Allah has made, you know, subhanAllah, Allah himself, Allah Jalla Jalalu, Allah himself is saying, I have embedded in you the love for temptation, for shahwat from women, from gold and, jewel, uh, and silver and wealth. From Khail Musawama, from horses that are fire branded horses, you know, race horses, and then from uh, Hars, and also from uh, Mal, and, and also from agriculture. Uh, so these things are there that attract. And well, and am you know, and, and the cattle, you know, a person loves to have a farmer has to, loves to have in a farm a lot of you know uh, cows and goat and whatnot. So six things Allah mentions that He has already put in us love and for that as a temptation. Now, somebody might ask a question that, yeah, Allah, why did you put this for us? I mean, if there was no temptation, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about purification of soul. The only reason we are talking about, uh, the only reason we're talking about soul or purification of soul is because there is in us a love for temptation, a love for shahawat. And from those six things. So, you know, like today, inshallah, from four to six, we'll be talking from the four truths, you know, how uh, the Surah Al-Imran will finish and then Surah Nisa will start. In that, the ayah will come up about purification of soul, which will be today from four to six. If you cannot attend four to six, every night at nine o'clock, I also do a summary of one juice of the Quran. So we started on the first Ramadan. Today will be the third juice summary. It's 9 p.m. Again, you can go to our um, YouTube channel. It's uh, Islamic Society of North Jersey on YouTube. Just click subscribe on the channel. And once you subscribe, so whenever we are live, you will know right away. You don't have to worry about the timings because it will pop up and show on your way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in that perspective is saying you have shahawat, you need to stop it. So therefore in this ayah in Surah Nisa, Allah says, al -anf And the soul is inclined towards greed allah has embedded in us greed and covetousness we covet the world that's why uh, the dunya looks so attractive to us you know uh, cars and houses and boats and vacation and traveling bermuda cancun all of this is very attractive for us because it is embedded and the reason these shahwat are there is for our iman to be strong see if there was no shahwa if there was no lazza if there was no temptation and attraction then we would not need to purify the soul. The soul is pure. The only reason the soul is becoming unpure or impurity, or impurifying, is when we go after the greed, when we follow our greed. 
And that is why Rasulullah said in a hadith very, very beautifully in a Sahih hadith, Rasulullah said, What taqu ashuh and fear covetousness, fear the greed, because greed destroys the nafs. Greed destroys the nafs. What taqu ashuh? Fa inna ashuh ahlaka man kana qablakum. You know, fear greed because greed is what destroyed the people that came before you. The previous qawm that came before the ummah of Muhammad Sallam, they were destroyed by greed. And we know very well as in San, that how much greed destroys us. You know, when we go after, uh, when we become greedy and we go after money, go, go after wealth, go after materialistic possessions, you know, luxuries of this world, when we go after things like the Surah Takathur, you know, that Surah we, many of us have memorized and we recite that. al takathur takathur you know, uh, the Takathur is from Kathara. Kathara means abundant, a lot. al hakum ulhi. All he means that something devours you, like something comes as a barrier, you know, something like a curtain you can't see. So Allah is saying that takathur, you know, accumulation of mutual pomp and glitter and glamour of this world, accumulation of wealth and possession of this world has devoured you, deviated you, had sidetracked you. al hakumat takathur from akhirah. What has, what has the um, uh, accumulation and greed devoured us from, deviated us from? It, de it devoured and deviated us from. Akhirah, from Jannah. We became in the hub of dunya. We became in the love of dunya. And there's nothing wrong to have love of dunya. So long as we can control it, we can master it. Allah subhanahu wa doesn't want rahbaniya, doesn't, doesn't want us to be like mystic or ascetic people that we are like totally cut off from the world that, oh, I, don't, I hate the dunya, I don't want dunya, I hate cars, I hate money, I hate this, I hate that. No. In Surah Qasr, Surah 28, Allah SWT says very clearly, وَلَا تَنْسَ, وَلَا تَنْسَ Do not forget. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Do not forget your nasib. It's an Urdu word also we say. Your nasib, your destiny, your fate. Meaning your nasib, what you have to acquire in this life. You know, you have to get an education. You have to get a job. You have to get a career. You have to marry. You have to family. These are all parts of nasib. Whatever the necessities of life are, yes, you have to take that. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْ you know, don't forget your provision from this dunya, meaning don't shun the dunya. Understand the, the, the fatality of greed, understand the danger of greed and covetousness. But at the same time, do not hate the dunya that you say that, oh, Islam has come and I have to just shove the dunya away. I just have to go sit in the masjid or go sit in some jungle and just do Allah, Allah, Allah. No, that is not in Islam. Ascetism, being an ascetic, is not in Islam. Islam is all about living in the hustle and bustle of life. Islam is all about living in the middle of all the temptations and yet immunizing yourself you know in yourself covering yourself from being prone to that greed so that is why rasul said rasul is saying in this hadith that fear of greed beware of greed for really greed destroyed the people that came before them how it forced them, greed forced them to spill the blood, to kill each other. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. 1400 years ago, Rasulullah said this, and today we see the people doing this, the countries doing this, the world doing this. Greed has made people go to war. Greed of accumulation of worldly resources, natural resources, had forced people to go to war and kill people and grab land and grab their resources there. Exactly the same thing that Rasulullah is saying 1400 years ago. That beware of greed, beware of coveting things. Because it destroyed the people before them, such that it provoked them, incited them to spill blood, to kill people, have bloodshed. Um, and, and that greed also made them to make their haram halal. Suddenly alcohol becomes halal. Suddenly eating swine becomes halal. Behind, greed. You know, when people are not careful of the ingredients, you know, when they buy something from the grocery store, they don't check the ingredient because in their mind, there is no purification of soul. There's no task to nafs. The nafs is not in zakah or zaki. So the nafs does not pay attention to these little things. If there's any pork product, if there's any gelatin, if there's any wine, anything in this ingredient, and they say, oh, just buy everything is halal. Everything is easy. So what happened? The greed make the person halal. They become mufti. They become judge themselves. They just say, instead of asking a learned person that is this product halal for me or not, instead of checking the ingredients on website, the person makes istahallu maharimahum. Istahallu from halal means they make things 
permissible what was impermissible for them. And why did they do that? Because of shuh. What is shuh? Greed. So the nafsul amaradun bisu is full of greed. That is the first level, you know, and that's the most important thing, as we said from Surah Yusuf that Allah is telling us. So we need to improve the soul. How you improve the soul to nafsul lawama, the second stage, the second phase or level, which is in Surah Qiyamah mentioned. In order to come from here to here, the first thing we need to conquer and crush is greed. And greed needs to be removed from the soul. And how is that done? The first thing is dhikr of Allah. Allah says in Surah Ra'ad, Surah 13, You know, brothers and sisters, the first cause, the first reason for greed to be embedded in the, in the, in the heart, in the soul, is the lack of itminan, um, the lack of uh, peace and tranquility. And that is why Allah's mother is saying, Verily indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts come to rest, come to itminan. See, when the heart is perturbed, when the heart is in tadabdub, you know, like in a state, or in a hala, in a state of constant turmoil, turbulence. You know, we all fly airplanes, like right now nobody's flying, but rem remember the days, it sounds like a long time. Like once upon a time, we used to fly in airplanes, right? Back in the days, remember that, before this lockdown. So when you would be in the plane, suddenly the captain would say, you know, please fasten your seatbelts. We are about to hit a pocket of air where it's going to be turbulent. So then you, the whole plane is like moving. That is how uh, tadabdub is. Your heart is always like constantly in a, in a turmoil. It's like... You know, like we study in, uh, in in physics, molecules, you know, you have molecules in a solid, molecules in a liquid, molecules in a gas. What's the most in, unstable state of molecule um, in, in that state? Is it in solid, liquid, or gas? You, you, go, you answer yourself. You should know that by now, okay? If you're not, then go back and learn physics 101. So the heart is just like those molecules constantly bouncing, bouncing. They don't have stability. And, and the structure that has stability is more firm. That's why solid is firm, because the structure, the molecules are, have stability and firmness. So the first state that we are in is in a state of turbulence, the state of Ammaradun Bisu. When it, we do dhikr of Allah, when you do the first tazkiyah, the first purification of soul that needs to be done is dhikrullah. Ala bi dhikr al qulub. And this is exactly in connection with what Rasulullah said also in another hadith. Rasul said that uh, you know, revive, renew your iman, you know, resuscitate your iman. Uh, they said, how, ya Rasul, how can we renew the iman? What do we have to do? Do we have to open the heart, clean something, or what do we have to do? So Rasul said, Qulu, say, meaning all of you say together. The word is Qulu, it's Sigatul Jama, not Mufrad. If it was Mufrad, singular in Arabic, it will be say, uh, قُلْ, you know, say, but it's قُلُوا, meaning all of you say together in unison, in a jama'ah, قُلُوا, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله. say, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله. it will remove your dirt and filth from the soul. So the best way to counter greed, the best way to crush the greed, a shuh, like Allah says, وَأَحْذَرَةُ الْأَنْفَسُ الشُّحْ uh, And that's why in Surah, um, uh, what was that? Surah Hasha, Surah 59. Allah SWT says very beautifully, uh, um, Whoever is saved from the greed of their soul, meaning protection, uh, covering. So you protect yourself, whoever is saved from the greed of their soul, they are the ones who are muflihun, humil muflihun, they're successful. So how do you cut off greed from your soul? How do you cut off the, the greed and covetousness from your heart? Dhikr of Allah. Because the more unstable your soul is, your nafs is, the more unstable your heart is, the more you will be prone to greed and covetousness. So the, to counter that, the medicine for that, the remedy and cure, shifa for that is, Indeed, with the dhikr of Allah, do the hearts come rest. And what dhikr is better than the shahada, than the kalima ilaha illallah?
That is why we should recite, as there are many rivayat or rasulullah, they tell us that we should recite at least a hundred times in a day. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Make a portion of your day, this Ramadan, brothers and sisters, make a promise to yourself this Ramadan that I will take out time out of my schedule, out of my busy schedule. I'll take time out where I just sit in seclusion, in a, in a corner, and I just do dhikr, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes, scholars have also allowed that you can just say this, the first part, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. You can say 100 times, la ilaha illallah, 100 times, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Because every time you say, la ilaha illallah, you say it slowly, nice, and stable, not fast and rushing, it makes an effect on the heart. Yes, the the, the word of Allah, the name of Allah, Ismul Jalal, Allah, when it's said from the tongue, Allah, Allah, it makes an impact in heart on the soul. That is why in the concept of Tasawwuf, in the concept of purification of soul, I know people have now maligned the whole concept of Tasawwuf, but Tasawwuf was something from Rasul Sallam, from uh, the, the Sahaba Kirar, the four Khulafa Rashidin did that, the Tasawwuf is basically purification of your soul, doing certain dhikr adhkar throughout the morning, afternoon, day and night in certain times to purify the soul. Because the soul, throughout the day, the soul is com continuously accumulating filth and dirt. You know, we are seeing things, we are hearing things, everything that goes in our eyes, in our ears is affecting our iman, our ruh. Like Allah says in the Quran, Allah puts a ra'an. Ra'an is like a, 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 a like a knot, you know, a knot with a rope that you would put. Whatever we do on a daily basis, whether we are speaking something bad, whether we are hearing something bad, whether we are seeing something bad, it is putting an effect, a filth, a dirt, a kachara, you know trash on the soul on the iman so you have iman here and you have layers of impurities you know layers of filth accumulating how will that be removed how will that be you know cleansed by saying the moment you say la ilaha illallah one knot opens the moment you say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah another knot opens so constant dhikr azkar throughout the day and the morning are important especially in this month of ramadan because like i said in the beginning of my talk right now that um, the month of Ramadan is a month of tazkiyah. Why? Because when you cut off food, when you cut off drink, when you cut off shahawat for the spouse, then your soul has energy and momentum to focus and concentrate on Allah, on Iman. See, when you're constantly eating throughout the day, when you're constantly drinking throughout the day, and when you're constantly having intimacy, then your nafs, your soul does not focus that much. On 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 uh, on Tazkia. and that's why the ayah we said from Surah Shams that Allah said, "Qad aflaha man zakkaha." Indeed, successful is the one who does zakkaha. Zakka yaski means to cleanse, just like we clean our clothes. You know, you put it in the laundry, you put the detergent, it it, it rules around. What is? How is the cloth being cleansed? It is mixed with water and detergent, and it's constantly going around and around. We need to cleanse our heart like a detergent, and the detergent for us is Quran. That is why Quran is a food for the soul. And that is why Allah revealed the Quran in the month of Ramadan. Because Allah is Al-Hakim, wise. He knows that in this month, people will be fasting. They will be cutting off food and drink. So the best food to take for the soul is Quran. Shahru Ramadan, alladhi umzila fil Quran. Hudan lil nasir bayinatim al huda. And then he's saying, Fasting has been prescribed to you just like the people before you so that you may acquire taqwa, have purity of soul. And that purity is going to come to you from where? From the dhikr of Allah, from the Quran. The more we recite Quran, why we pray taraweeh? You know, we listen to the Quran in taraweeh. We, you know, pick up and open and recite the Quran. So the best dhikr of Allah is the Quran, tilawah al Quran, reciting from Surah Fadir to Surah Nas. The second big zikr after that is to understand the meaning of the Quran. The trans what is Allah saying? Especially people like me and you, us who are non-Arabs, uh, you know, and non-native. You know, I, we don't know Arabic language, not our mother tongue. So we have to understand what is Allah telling us word by word, ayah by ayah. And that is why I have taken a special endeavor, a special task this Ramadan that from day one of Ramadan I'm doing every day from four to six. 
uh, a detailed word by word explanation of the Quran. And it's from four to six. You can join in anytime you want. Just go to our uh, YouTube channel, Islamic Society of North Jersey, click subscribe, click on the bell icon, and then you will uh, get the notification. But whatever you can attend, even five minutes, if you can attend from four to six, something will go in. Because the per the way of Tazkiyat al Nafs is something should be absorbed, something should go in. Our heart is like a sponge, brothers and sisters. You know, the sponge that we use in the kitchen or in the in the sink to wipe if you leave the sponge on the counter it dries up right when it dries up it becomes so hard so stiff right it becomes so stiff that you know you touch it, it's like a rock solid but that same sponge as stiff as it is as hard as it is the moment you put it in a glass in a beaker in a vessel of water you as soon as you put in it it becomes very soft very tender that same sponge this is the heart kalb the kalb it becomes soft with the dhikr of Allah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, reciting Quran, uh, learning the meaning of the Quran, memorizing the Quran. This Ramadan, at least try to memorize one ayah a day. I don't ask much. Just one ayah a day. In 30 days, you will have 30 ayat. At least that is 30 more ayahs that you knew before this Ramadan came. And what better time to, to do than this Ramadan when we are in a lockdown, we are confined, isolated in our homes, can't go to the masjid, you know, uh, this Ramadan, all those complainers who used to complain, you know, people, there were a lot of people complaining in the previous Ramadan that, you know, hurry up, finish the Taraweeh, it's so long, you know, stop the fundraising in the masjid, let's just get pray. You know, all those people, <laughs> this is what I say, they used to do na shukri, you know, they were unthankful of the blessing. Now Allah took away the blessing. Those same people who used to complain every night in every masjid. You know, I'm not criticizing any speci special person, but I'm saying, talking in general, that those people who used to criticize in every masjid, that, you know, hurry up, finish the thrive, we have to go, we have to go. Now you have the whole time in your life this Ramadan. Go wherever you want to go. You can pray Taraweeh in your home. You can get done in 15 minutes. You know, 20 rakahs, qul wallahu had, qul wallahu had. Every rakah recite qul wallahu had, you're done in 15 minutes. 20 raka. If you do pray eight, you get done in five minutes. Eight raka, qul wallahu had. And then you have all the time you want. Remember, brothers and sisters, when we are ungrateful for something, Allah takes it away. We have done ungratefulness to Allah for the blessing we used to have in Ramadan. Our massage used to be full. You know, this is a masjid also. This is my masjid. This used to be full. But now in this Ramadan, it's empty. I come here every day, 9 o'clock, you know, 4 o'clock, 4 to 6, they do the program. Then 9 o'clock, I do the tafsir summary. Then 9.30, we do taraweeh. My sons are doing taraweeh. You can also watch that live also on our YouTube channel. Just uh, subscribe to the channel. And you can see... But there is empty, you know. Wallah and Azim, brothers and sisters, I don't joke you and I don't kid you. Every night that we are being praying Taraweeh here, we cry. We cry from the heart. It's empty. It's just me and my two sons, three of us, and we're reciting the book of Allah, and the whole Ranak of Ramadan is gone. The whole attraction of Ramadan is gone because we were so unthankful, ungrateful. Uh, for, for for what we had and now that it's not with us and now that we are missing it we should be more thankful to Allah SWT. so the best way to remove greed is number one do dhikr of Allah number second thing the second thing to do to remove greed is give thanks to Allah the more the person says shukr alhamdulillah surah fatiha the first ayah what is saying alhamdulillah rabbil alameen all praise and thanks to Allah uh, sabr and shukr, these are two things that removes greed, covetousness, a shuh from the nafs, from the soul. It removes the greed and purifies the soul and elevates you, raise you to the level of lawama, nafsul lawama, as mentioned in Surah Qiyamah, Surah 75, verse number two. So today, the first lecture, the, this is part one of the series. Next Sunday, we'll continue from here, inshallah. So what we have learned as uh, today in the first stage is that we have to improve our soul from Ammaratan Bisu to Lawama. For that, we have to do two things. Now, number one uh, is uh, Dhikr of Allah, the any form of Dhikr. And number two, give Shukr, thanks to Allah. Constantly pray. Just pray two Raka Salatu Shukr. That's it. Just pray two Raka Salatu Shukr every day. Two Raka Nafil, anytime, morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you get a chance. Just say, Allahu Akbar, make your knees, uh, that Raka Atain Nafil Salatu Shukr to Allah. And say, Allahu Akbar, recite any surah. And then when you're done, as to Allah, as to Allah, just say, Oh Allah, I prayed this two rakahs, salatu shukr, 
purely and sincerely for, Lu for you, ya Allah. Accept this salat of shukr. Allah loves abdan shakura. Allah loves a thankful slave. Like the Rasul said to Aisha anha, when she said, why are you tiring yourself, ya Rasul Why are you staying up all night? Your feet is swelling. He, he said to her, ya Aisha, ala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a thankful slave of Allah? In spite of that, Allah has told about him that he has forgiven in him and he is the in Jannah and he is the leader of the people going to Jannah and all that. Still, he's saying, I want to be a thankful slave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to be a thankful slave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to purify our soul. Inshallah, next Sunday, 1.30. I apologize for the sound glitch in the beginning. Inshallah, next Sunday, I'll make sure that everything is clear and sound is working. So next Sunday, again, 1.30 p.m., we'll continue from here, part two of this series purification of soul where we will talk about how to elevate or raise our status from nafsul lawama to nafsul mutma'inna which is the desire of or, or the goal of the soul before we die in this dunya jazakallah uh, khairan thank you very much and uh, uh, so brother Ihab are, uh, is there a, should we just end or is there any question or anything I don't know Okay, so we'll just end, inshallah. Remember, um, uh, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel, Islamic Side of North Jersey. Uh, I have programs every day uh, over there. Uh, they are scheduled. All you got to do is just click on the scheduled program, and you can attend that. And just subscribe to the channel, so this will get the notification. Jazakallah khairan to all of you for attending today this uh, series. Inshallah, next Sunday again, we'll be here live on Darul Islah YouTube channel. And continue from here the second part. Let us make dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi la akhirati hasana wa qina bin naam. Rabbana la tudhu qulubana ba'da hitana wa hablana min ladun bi rahmah inna kan tuhaam. Allahumma anta salamu minka salam tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayta ya zilja wa ikram. Allahumma taqabbal minna inna kan tu samiyu alim. Wa tuba alayna maulana inna kan tu abrahim. Allahumma yaqfalana dhurubana wa kafaranna sayyatana wa tuwafana bil abrar wa lakna bil salihin ya rabbi al-meen. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana. Allahumma taqabbal minna qiyamana. Allahumma taqabbal minna ruku'ana. Allahumma taqabbal minna sujudana. Allahumma taqabbal minna kulla al-amala alladhi a'bilna khalisin li wajjik al-kareem fi hadhi al-shahar al-mubarak. Fi hadhi al-ayyam al-mubarak ya rabbi al-meen. اللهم تقبل منا كل العبادة الذي عملنا خالص لوجهك الغريب يا رب العالمين وأحسن الجزاء لنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أنت تكون رادين عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم آت نفوسنا زكاها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها مولها اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها مولها اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها مولها يا رب العالمين أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليك وصلى الله على خلق محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه برحمة الرحمن سبحانك الله وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.